Hello, Namaskar and welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mavani. I hope you all are doing good. Today is 7th October and today is Sunday. I'm sure you all are enjoying your Sunday. Now, dear friends, uh, on Sundays we don't get editorials and articles, but we have some important news items to go through. A uh, couple of uh, items associated with environment and I believe that uh, based on these items, uh, there can be a direct question in your prelims examination too. So, uh, let's crack on. Let's move ahead. And before moving ahead, let me tell you that our pen drive and tablet courses for UPSC Civil Services Examination is available for you guys. It will cost you 22,500 rupees only. It will cover pre and mains examination. If you compare this pen drive and tablet course with traditional coaching classes, uh, then in traditional coaching classes, on an average, you have to pay somewhere around 2 lakh rupees. The other thing or the most beautiful thing or most interesting thing about pen drive and tablet course is that you can go through all the lectures as many times as you like and you can go through them uh, whenever you feel it is right whenever you are at your peak hours you know you don't have to follow someone else schedule so that's the most interesting thing about digital education and uh, to find out more about it uh, check out studyaq.com if you have any question or queries you have chat support available you have our phone numbers as well free, feel, feel free and give us a call in case you have any doubts regarding it or if you want to know more about it you can download the pdf of today's lecture from my fb page and twitter handle now let's crack on first item that we have on our table one of the most important news item of the day is this one that election commission has announced it has declared poll schedule for five states of our country you have uh, chhattisgarh madhya pradesh uh, then we have mizoram Rajasthan and then lastly it's going to be in Telangana now dear friends uh, you might have heard about this thing you know people say that you need to read between the lines and you, you have to understand things so I'm going to give you a small example you know this is uh, just a trick or tips uh, you can say because today is Sunday so we can talk about it a little bit uh, four or five minutes on this thing right so I hope everyone is uh, happy with this thing so when it comes to preparing, you know, smart way of preparing or uh, many a times, you know, when you read something, uh, like say, for example, this news item here. So if you just go through, if you pay attention to this item, this line, that election commission sets month long poll schedule for five states. Now, I'm sure we have this GK general knowledge or general understanding or pre-existing knowledge about this thing that we have a central election commission and then we have election commissions. Uh, they are known as state election commissions uh, right, for various different states. Now here, this news item or this main headline is saying that election commission. It's not saying election commissions have, you know, declared poll schedule for five states. Uh, so here, because it is talking about a singular body, so we can understand from this thing itself that it is the central election commission. Uh, that is going to look after all these state assembly elections. So from this thing, you can also understand that when it comes to state assembly elections, right, it is Central Election Commission uh, that is in charge or the main body that will look after all these elections. Now, from this thing, you can also ask this question, like how many other items are covered by this or how many different types of elections are covered by this Central Election Commission? So you can open your you know, uh, reference books and then you will find that when it comes to uh, parliament elections, it is look after, looked after by a central election commission. When it comes to the state uh, assembly elections, again, it is looked after by uh, central election commission. Then you have president election, vice presidential elections. All these elections are predominantly four elections are looked after by this central election commission. Then you can ask some more questions. Uh, you, you can ask like... Uh, uh, who is the main person or if there are multiple people who are in charge of this Central Election Commission. Uh, you might have heard or read somewhere that uh, you have this Chief Election Commission and then you have some election commissioners. So what is the difference between election commissioners and Chief Election Commissioner? Uh, who are the people uh, who will you know, fill up this post of election commissioners at this level? and what are what are the criteria how they are removed how they are appointed all these things you know all these questions you can ask and the thing is how it works is the more question you ask you place your mind into a zone of curiosity and when you are curious enough 
all those negative items like being lazy and procrastination and I will do it later on and all these things will automatically drop down and you will find that whatever limited energy you have uh, today you will be you know able to deploy it or use it for something that is productive so I hope uh, this uh, a particular trick will help you always ask a question you know slow down a little bit right uh, why so rush we don't need that much rush uh, generally we you know what we do is uh, we set our dates first we say that uh, we are going to I want to crack this particular exam in 2019 but uh, you can do it a bit later on first of all let's you know let's leave the date behind let's uh, just focus on what we have today and uh, once we start doing this thing then a time will come after four five six months or depending on how much you are giving or how much time you have uh, utilized or deployed for this thing you know invested uh, after after this after a couple of months you will come to know that okay 2019 is going to be a little bit impractical but 2020 is something yes uh, I can achieve 2020 or uh, you know so so just have a little bit of patience and uh, you know slow down a little bit and pay more attention to the items that you are that you are having on your hand and then you will find that uh, things will get you know it will you will get this in-depth understanding and quality and things like that so I hope uh, you will uh, give it a go and uh, do let me know if you I'm, I'm sure if you give it a go and if you are giving your hundred percent then you will find some good results out of this technique of asking questions to everything that is there on your board now we have uh, this five states here so let's go through the dates uh, chat this good now again you know you can ask a question here just to stop here for a minute and what have you heard about chat this good in the recent past as far as uh, uh, national news items are concerned if you are from chat this good then you would be knowing more things about chat this good but if you are not from chat this good then uh, I think in Naxalism, right, uh, most of the time, when we think about Chhattisgarh, it means Chhattisgarh has a very good culture and everything. But when it comes to news items, when it comes to current affairs, then it is this uh, Naxalism, you know, uh, killing our security personnel and other things. So when Chhattisgarh is going uh, for polls, uh, then we can understand that things are going to be a bit difficult over there. And this is one of the main reasons why a big state like Rajasthan the biggest in terms of area is going to have election in just one single date right that is 7th December but a uh, uh, relatively speaking if we compare it with uh, Chhattisgarh then we find that it is Chhattisgarh is a small state a small state in term, terms of uh, area when it comes to Raj when we compare it with Rajasthan or Madhya Pradesh but then as well we are going to have uh, two different dates and one of the reason is that because of this security issues so now you know the logic you know without reading anything sp specific about this particular thing if we just uh, dig a little bit deep in our mind then we find that our mind is having all those you know it's a big mind with this memory palace that we have so the mind will bring you you know it will it will provide you options that here we go this is Chhattisgarh so it could be next level but for that you have to slow down a little bit so you have a uh, Madhya Pradesh is going on poll on November 28th, uh, so is Mizoram and Rajasthan and Telangana, they are going uh, to see polls on 7th December. Results uh, will be declared on 11th December and uh, model code of conduct, uh, you know, comes into effect and how it works is that as soon as uh, this schedule is announced or the time of, uh, you know, the, the time is announced, from that point itself, this MCC comes into effect. Moving on to another item, uh, picking out uh, silent ghosts in the deep. Uh, what it is all about? It's about this, you know, ghost nets. Ghost nets are all those nets uh, that are abandoned, lost or discarded fishing gears that are lying there in the bottom of our ocean and seas and they are basically being a death trap for uh, marine wildlife and they are, you know, killing this vulnerable species and destroying our uh, ecosystem and which is very sad thing. And the sad thing is that if we if we go through this report of 2000 of uh, United Nations Environment Program of 2009, uh, this report called "Abandoned, Lost, or Otherwise Discarded Fishing Gear," it says that out of the total six lakh forty thousand tons, six lakh forty thousand tons of fishing gear, approximately ten percent—that is sixty-four thousand tons of this uh, 
uh, you know, fishing gears are somewhere down in the ocean. They are not being used and they are killing so many, you know. We cannot imagine the destruction that has been conducted by this ghost nets. And there are a few people out there, like uh, you have this uh, Suneha Jagannathan. Uh, she is, you know, uh, diving and uh, she is taking out and, you know, uh, getting rid of all these uh, ghost nets. Uh, so that's a very wonderful job that is done by her and there are many more people out there you know they are they are making our planet a bit more beautiful uh, one of the biggest problem is uh, use of uh, plastic and more durable gas and uh, plastic you know it doesn't get uh, it's not degradable item so it will stay there for ages and ages and it will you know keep on continuing destroying our uh, ecosystem microplastic is again a very big issue we have talked about this thing earlier on as well now experts uh, now they are urging that uh, central government recently you know came out with this decision union health ministry particularly said that we need to get rid of this electronic cigarettes in our country now you have a person called alex uh, uh, vodak and alex vodak was uh, president of international harm reduction association and what he is saying he is presenting this uh, case that uh, vaping or these vapes or electronic cigarettes are not that much harmful compared to this normal tobacco made cigarettes and uh, at present there are other countries as well around the world like Canada was a country uh, that was uh, you know among the first countries to ban this vaping products but now they have got this new results and now they are uh, basically encouraging smokers to switch from normal traditional or conventional uh, tobacco products to this vaping because it is less harmful so uh, it's an eye-opener for our country as well uh, right we need to go through some studies and we need to allow this vaping if it is less harmful if it is scientifically proven then it is less harmful than this normal cigarettes then yes we can uh, allow it to be you know to be sold and consumed in our country because uh, every year we find around the world 70 lakh people die because of uh, tobacco and tobacco consumption the problem in our country is we have both chewing as well as smoking tobacco and here you have this interesting figure that 80 percent around the world right around 80 percent of world's 1.1 billion smokers live in low and middle income countries moving on to another item again something to do with environment we have so many items today associated with environment and ecology and biodiversity etc so national green tribunal held that the ministry of environment has to act as a nodal agency small item here but important nodal agency to ascertain whether the sub region uh, regional plans uh, for protection of uh, national conservation zones ncz's prepared by whom prepared by states are in consonance with the regional plans prepared by national capital region planning board that's it small item but uh, this ngt has held that mc uh, this moefcc is going to be the nodal agency to look after this thing supervisory role will be done by this ministry of environment uh, defense related item on our table we have prithvi 2 missile and uh, uh, india's uh, strategic forces command uh, they have uh, conducted uh, successfully test fired this indigenously developed uh, this type of items are asked you know in your examination in prelims so prithvi 2 missile it's an indigenously developed missile capable of nuclear weapon yes it is what is the range of this missile strike range is 350 kilometer what type of missile it is it is surface to surface missile and what's its capacity capacity is 500 to 1000 kilo of warheads it can carry uh, moving on to another item, a safe haven for rare dragonflies. You have dragonflies and damselflies uh, on your screen here. This is dragonfly, this is a uh, damselfly. Uh, a trained eye can understand or can look for the difference between these two items. But uh, for general studies, uh, the most important thing for us to understand is that uh, when it comes to dragonflies and when it comes to this uh, damselflies uh, we find them in the buffer zone of silent valley national park where you find the silent valley national park in kerala and a recent survey has uh, confirmed that we have some 82 species and out of this 82 species 14 are extremely rare and you find them in this silent valley national park in uh, kerala and the reason is that this buffer zone is providing it 
or this species is you know they get uh, this conducive environment for for aging for feeding for breeding they find good water uh, good habitat diversity etc is here and you have this uh, you know in this national park uh, silent valley national park you have this high altitude shola grassland so from the name itself you can understand that this grassland is on high altitude it's a very rare thing so you find this uh, high altitude uh, shola gr uh, grasslands and uh, this grasslands are a uh, hub of uh, biodiversity in our western ghats so here are a few names if you are interested as far as your exams are concerned they won't ask you this sort of technical names but a quick glance is will be no harm uh, moving on to another item it is about india and russia you know that uh, vladimir putin was here in our country on friday we have signed this deal that we are going to purchase this s400 air defense uh, missile systems uh, from russia uh, it's uh, going to be a 40300 crore rupee deal it's a big deal and uh, the reason why we have this thing on our table today is because there is not going to be any sort of offset clause now what offset clause is all about how it works is that if we are going to purchase as per our defense procurement procurement basically means purchasing so when we are purchasing or as per our defense purchase procedure procurement procedure uh, if uh, we are going ahead with a deal that is uh, around uh, or 2000 crore or more then we have uh, a 30 percent offset clause that means uh, a company from which or a country from which we are buying these items 30% uh, of uh, total deal money will be invested in our country for domestic production and other items. But when it comes to this uh, S-400 air defense uh, missile systems, we have dropped this uh, offset clause because we want the delivery of these items as soon as possible. And when you add this offset clause, so of course it is going to take some more time you know, for, uh, for the country, for Russia or the companies in Russia to decide uh, to go through or to find a proper company in India and other things. So to save this time and uh, uh, it's our uh, defense requirement at present. So this is the reason why we have dropped uh, this offset uh, clause when it comes to this deal. Now you have uh, one more environment related news item. Very important again. Uh, statement types of questions can be formed from this thing. So we have Western Ghats here. You have Eastern Ghats on this side right of our peninsula portion and eastern ghats are spread over odisha andhra pradesh parts of telangana uh, karnataka tamil nadu and all these states are part of this eastern ghats some basic items like western ghats are uh, higher in terms of altitude or in height compared to eastern ghats they are more continuous compared to this one here you find some gaps here so these are some basic items uh, associated with eastern ghats and western ghats more you will find it in your basic books and crts and other books right so i'm not going into all those items here it is part of your of course uh, self preparation now the thing is dear friends uh, that uh, the reason why it is in news is because a survey was conducted and out of this 100 years uh, roughly 100 years 1920 to 2015 survey by university of hyderabad it indicates that 43% uh, of this area was under forest uh, in 1920 now it is just 27.5% the other thing is uh, agriculture fields uh, you know eight percent of forest area was converted into agriculture fields four percent was converted into scrubs or uh, this grasslands and uh, eastern ghat is an area that is generally speaking ignored when it comes to ecological you know studies more is conducted in western ghats and himalayan portion but generally eastern ghat is or eastern ghats are are, are, are ignored or not paid that much importance but they are very important for our country as well because uh, you have some 2600 plant species in eastern Ghat. you have some endemic plants uh, here in eastern Ghat. so in this uh, in this you know in this context it is very important uh, a patch or portion of our country as far as patches are concerned there used to be some 1,379 patches in 1920s. Now we have 9,457. So it's a matter of concern. And uh, agricultural activities, uh, deforestation, construction of dams, roads, etc. is destroying our eastern guards. Moving on to another item. It's about common ant pollinates. Rare wild jamun. Jamun is a plant species that you can see on your screen. Now, this is about Western Ghats. So, generally, you know that when it comes to pollinators or pollination, 
we think it it's all these flying insects like bees and butterflies and other items bats maybe or birds wasps and bees etc but uh, a research was conducted by kerala's central university and it's very interesting to find that uh, when it comes to this uh, jamun jamun is uh, is a vulnerable species categorized under this vulnerable category by iucn that is international union for conservation of nature and uh, uh, this ants right it was observed uh, with the help of this research that white footed ants are working as a pollinating agent and this is a very interesting study because uh, generally speaking ants are not you know uh, depicted as or they are depicted as poor pollinators uh, but here you find that one of the main player of uh, pollination of this uh, jamun was conducted by this ants so in case if you find a question asking you you know in your prelims that from below given items observe or identify those insects or those species that play a role of pollinators and if you find ants uh, apart from this one right you can see here you have this birds bats wasps and bees and ants are also pollinators so keep this thing in mind that's everything in today's discussion please make sure that you share this lecture with other students enjoy your day i will see you tomorrow god bless you all jai hind